Welcome to 8 Minute Crimes. We upload multiple videos each week, and we are working on obtaining exclusive interrogations in the very near future. It's free to like, it's free to subscribe, and it really does help the channel immensely. So if you like consistent content, and you like what we're doing here, let us know. We would love to have you along for the journey. Information about this case is in the description box below. Enough rambling, let's get into it. Yes, now, is there some place I can sit on a camera angle? I don't know that. I don't know that here, sir. Um, when we shut the door, I believe if you pull your chair close to the door, you'll be okay. okay. And if you want me to double check that, I'll go look on camera, knock sure. on the door, and we'll pull the chair back away. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back. Thanks. All right. All right. While he's doing that, we just met in the hall. I'm Special Agent Hornick with BCI. And can you state your full name for me? Sergeant David Darko, D A R K O W. Okay. And my laptop's a little bit in the way right now. We've got some video we want to show you later. Um, that's why it's staged up there. Do you prefer to go by Dave? Did you, did you say? Sure. Okay, and I do the same. Uh, Dave, we talked about. In, um, yeah, your attorney's in the room as well. Um, Vincent Pop, is that correct, sir? Correct. Okay. Where you're sitting, sir, is fine. Okay. Out of the out of the first of all, I'll be in a little bit anyway, I'll look at the video. That's all right. Thank you. Let me introduce myself real quick. Yeah. I'm Matt Chan. I'm Dave Dark. I'm Brent Kirkpatrick with the uh, BCI. Go, thanks. Vince. Nice to meet you, Vince. Okay, we also discussed um, that as a matter of course, we're we're assigned as BCI to investigate this outside of the police department. So we're investigating the shooting that occurred in the Walmart at Beaver Creek on August the 5th. Does that sound accurate? I don't know why you're here. Um, in an instance like this, we are a criminal investigation agency, so we are investigating the possibility of criminal activity. With that being said, uh, you're not forced to be here, you're not in custody, you're here voluntarily? That's correct. Okay. Uh, even though that's so, even though your attorney's here, we still, as a matter of course for our agency, uh, read Miranda waiver so you understand what your rights are and know that you do not have to talk with us. I understand. Okay. Um, if you'll allow me, I'm going to read this out to you out loud. I know you're familiar, but that's the way we do it. We have to sign a couple of things and we'll move on from there. Okay. Uh, Dave, before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions, to have him or her present with you during questioning. If you can't afford a lawyer, we'll be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, again, we know he's present, uh, you'll still have the right to stop the questioning at any time. You have the right to stop the questioning at any time until you talk to an attorney. You understand those rights? I do. Okay. Um, I need you to sign, please, date, and put the time right in there. We're on the 8th today, right? Today's the 8th, correct. August 8th. I've got about the 10, 20, Dave. Okay. And then we're going to trade off for a second here. I'm going to sign up as a witness. <coughs> Okay, and there's a waiver of right statements as well in ours. It's, uh, it says, I have read the statement of my rights in it, and it has been read to me, and I understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. You know, it's here. I understand and know what I'm doing. No promises or threats have been made to me, and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. I hereby voluntarily and intentionally waive my rights, and I'm willing to make a statement and answer questions. If you agree with that, Dave, same thing on the bottom there. Should I cross out the part about the lawyer? I do not want a lawyer at this time since he's in the room. We don't typically need to do that. It's, uh, it is it could be whatever your attorney wants to do. Just leave it. Yeah. Doesn't make intuitive sense, though, does it? It's all right. Mr. Pop, you might sign as a witness for that. I know you told me to call you Vince. Does that uh, still apply? Yes. Okay. For now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get out of here, 
Thank you. Yeah, bolt, please. Can you talk about that? Top line there underneath. There's two witness lines there. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay, Dave, again, um, we're here to discuss what occurred at the Walmart on the 5th. Uh, that would be Wednesday the 5th. Um, sorry, Tuesday the 5th. Tuesday night the 5th. So I'm going to take some notes as we go through. Um, I do want to get a couple more uh, bits of information from you just to verify. Um, you tell me your, your sergeant, David Darko, your ranking sergeant. What's your badge number, Dick? Seven zero. Is that the same as your radio call sign? Uh, yes. Okay. How many years experience do you have with the department? Seventeen. Seventeen. Is that all with Beaver Creek and your law enforcement experience? Yes. Okay. Okay. The uh, let's just go right to it. Let's go to Tuesday night as um, start wherever you like to. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at what's your first knowledge of an incident at Walmart was. If you can start earlier than that, go ahead. But take me through it. Um, we're going to ask you a lot of questions. I'm going to try to let you go through it once the first time and uh, tell tell us what happened. Okay. Um, I was speaking with Sergeant Spangler who was off duty. Um, I was outside, parked outside of his house at the curb. Um, we were just chatting about whatever, personal stuff. Uh, outside, uh, outside where at the curb, Dave? Uh, right outside of Sergeant Spangler's residence. Okay. He lives, um, he, he lives um, back in, in that plat. So I was, I was fairly close to where the incident had occurred when it came out. You were on duty? I was on duty. Okay. Sergeant Spangler was off duty. Okay. Um, it's a friend of mine, so sometimes I'll go over there. Uh, we'll chat about stuff. Sometimes I'll see him. Right. Sometimes you know. Okay. I go over there and and um, and we discuss work-related things or we're personal things, whatever. Okay. Um, so I was sitting there talking to him when the initial call came out. Approximate time. Eight twenty. Okay. Eight eight p.m. thereafter. Correct. Okay. Um. Dispatch came over the radio, uh, sent officers to Walmart on a, it was a weapons complaint uh, that was being called in on 911. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the broadcast saying that uh, there, was a, there was a man inside with a gun. Okay. Um, so I immediately left uh, Sergeant Spangler's residence and started heading to that location. Officers, um, I did not get on the radio to say I was en route um, simply because um, I didn't want to tie up radio time. Um, and I had other officers who were responding to dispatch saying they were en route. Okay. Um, if I take over the radio, nobody else can talk. Understood. So I just go. Yeah. Um, responded code three uh, to, uh, to the area of Walmart. While, we, while I was en route, um, there was a couple more broadcasts from dispatch saying that um, the caller was reporting that he believed the subject was in the pet supply area of Walmart, that he was in the corner, and that he was he believed he was loading the gun. Um, dispatch at one point also advised that, um, they, that he believed it was a rifle. Um, so they maintained contact with the initial caller and was able, they were able to um, give us updates as we were responding to the scene. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with uh, this, that store. I've, I've worked in there for um, all kinds of calls um, and um, you know, extra duty during the holidays. So I knew the, where the pet supply area was. Mm -hmm. And um, when I pulled in, I pulled in over by the Sam's. That's where I entered the lot um, at the Sam's location. Okay. So I knew uh, the closest entrance was that garden, um, that garden area, the outdoor area of Walmart. Mm -hmm. And so I came in that that direction, um, responded right to those doors because if he was in the pet area, that garden entrance would have put me literally right around the corner. As soon as I entered the store from the garden area, um, it would have taken me right to the pet area, which would have been on my right. So I go up, I park, 
I see that Sean had already called 37. I had heard that he was um, he was already on scene. Sean being who? Um, Sean Williams, uh, officer that works 11 to 11. Okay. And um, I heard he was already on scene. Um, I didn't know where he was until I pulled up, and then he came running up to my location. Um, he had a rifle. Um, we knew that the subject who was inside was um, possibly armed with a rifle. That's what was being reported to us. Um, and so I went, as soon as I pulled up, I went to the back. Um, we, in the supervisor's cars, we keep um, our rifle, a shotgun, and a less lethal gun in a vault container in the back. So I went around to the back, grabbed um, the service uh, rifle, uh, from the from the vault in the car, okay. um, and grabbed a, a tactical vest that belongs to Sergeant Molnar. Him and I share a car, mm -hmm. and so it's known that um, that we'll share that that tactical vest. Okay. And it has um, extra mags for the AR, mm -hmm. um, tactical equipment, that type of thing. Okay. So I grabbed that vest, throw that around. Um, load my AR, mm -hmm. and now um, Sean has his AR, I have my AR, and we tried to enter through the garden area, which would have been the closest area to where the suspect was. And you say AR, you mean AR-15? AR-15, okay. um, department issue and assault rifle, although Sean Williams, I think, is his personal okay. assault rifle. All right. <coughs> so we, we attempted to go through those gar garden doors, and the doors were locked, unfortunately. Um, this caused us to both have to respond um, to the next set of doors into Walmart, um, which would be closest to um, the pharmacy type area. Okay. So it would be the westernmost entrance that was open. Okay. Um, and, and so we can understand the layout. You, when you responded to the garden doors that were locked, is that in the front or the side of the building? Front of the building. Okay. And the other entrance that you went to is also in the front of the building? Correct. Okay. So it would be the next western entrance. Gotcha. Or, or, I'm sorry, it would be the most western entrance, mm -hmm. but it was to the east of the garden doors. Got it. Okay. okay. Um, so we walk in and immediately, um, we're at a brisk pace, and um, I immediately see that a greeter still at the front entrance. It appeared as though some of the people around there had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I started giving commands to the greeter to get cover, get down. Um, I believe Sean was also telling people to get out, mm -hmm. um, take cover, okay. this type of thing. Okay. Um, we both are familiar with the store, so we walk in that entrance. Um, go left down the aisle past the pharmacy heading towards the pet supply area. Mm -hmm. um, is it like a center aisle? Is it a side aisle? I mean, is it, it's, not the side, it's not the side of the building aisle. It's more one of them. I know you have many center aisles, but it's one that's in, in toward the center. This is the aisle we're headed down is one of their main aisles that extends all the way across the store. One of several that's all the way to the back, front to back, correct? We're going sideways. We're going side okay. at this point. We go in the front entrance. We go left, and now we're we're headed west through the store. Gotcha. This aisle goes all the way from the garden access doors. Gotcha. All the way to the um, produce. Okay. So it would go all the way through, okay. cutting the store all the way. And I, I want to cut. Um, I want to keep you talking on that. So the pet section is in, you sound very familiar with the directionality of the store. The pet section is in what, what corner of the store? It is in the um, southwest corner of the store. Okay, and that's a, the, the southwest corner of the store is a front corner or a back corner? Front. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Thanks. Okay, so we're both um, moving in tandem um, at a brisk, a brisk pace, not a run, but a brisk walk. We start, um, we, we enter the pet supply area and um, don't hear or see anything initially. So we start, um, you know, walking as we're clearing each aisle as we're walking back to that, to that corner location. Um, nobody else in the pet area from what I remember at the time. We finally get to the very last um, aisle 
and I realize that there's a fairly good chance that he's probably back there since we haven't come across him yet. You've cleared all the other aisles. Right, we're present. clearing him to our left mm -hmm. as we're walking okay. back west. Okay. So we're clearing each aisle. We get to the very last one, and I, I remember slowing up a bit because I figured he's probably in that very last aisle. Mm -hmm. Um, have my my rifle at low ready, and um, I, I glance around that last aisle end cap, and I see a male that fits the description that we were dispatched to. Mm -hmm. um, he's standing in uh, in the corner of the store. Um, he has a a rifle that looks very similar to what I know to be an AR-15 style mm -hmm. assault weapon. Mm -hmm. um, he, has, he also has it in what I would, I would refer to as a low ready type position where uh, his left hand is on the foregrip okay. of the rifle and his right hand is near the action portion of the rifle. Okay. Um, I had less of a view of his right hand because it was covered by the rifle, mm -hmm. um, but I remember him holding the rifle in like a low ready type position. Okay. And he was more or less facing us at this point, um, or or maybe slightly candid. Okay. Um, to to um, it would be his right or left. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so I took up a position where I tried to stay a little bit behind cover to some, to some degree at the end, end cap, mm -hmm. <clears throat> glanced around the corner um, and started giving him verbal commands to drop the, drop the gun. What specifically did you say? That you, drop, that you recall? Uh, it was either drop the gun or drop the weapon. Okay. But I was very loud and very clear. Go ahead. Okay. Um, at this point, um, I remember Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams. Um, he was in a position where he was to my rear as we were going down the aisleways clearing them. And at this point, I remember he came around to my right. I was looking left. He came around to my right. Mm -hmm. And um, and took a position further out um, in the in the aisle. Um, so I'm focused in on the suspect. I give him commands. Um, I I remember Sean also yelling a command. Um, I believe he said something very similar to me: "Drop the weapon." Um, and then I yelled at one point for him to get on the ground. And. <clears throat> He initially, when I first yelled, uh, "Drop the gun or drop the weapon," mm -hmm. um, I remember he 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 had a um, a look of like of shock uh, when when he realized that we were there. Um, still had the gun, but kind of looked up and and had a shocking look on his face and kind of stepped back. Um, at that point. Despite our repeated attempts to tell him to put the gun down and get on the ground, he didn't either, and he started moving to um, in an eastern direction. So he kind of turned back and to his right, my left, um, and, and acted as though he was either going to start running or take a position of cover okay. behind the aisle. Okay. Um, that's when I heard two shots go out uh, from my right, okay. and I knew it was coming from Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams' rifle. Okay. Any questions? I'll let you continue on from there. Um, what, what happened after the shots were fired? After the shots are fired, the suspect goes down. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing I can tell you is that when he ran um, to my left, to his right, mm -hmm. 
when you started to to go that down that area, I I had less. I, I was better cover in my position, mm -hmm. but I had less of a vantage point on him because now he's going down mm -hmm. the aisle that I'm taking cover behind. Right. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I remember. I remember thinking. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know if he was hit or not, but he went. He did go down in that in that direction, mm -hmm. and so I remember thinking, "Well, I've got I've got to get back to this other mm -hmm. aisle in case mm -hmm. he didn't." Right. Um, he suddenly started to get back up, and that's when it crossed my mind that maybe he he didn't get hit. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he just fell because mm -hmm. he had tripped or something. Yeah. And um, and so I, I remember thinking. I'm gonna have to get over to this next aisle for when he, if he, if he makes it over that. Yeah. Um, he didn't. He went back down okay. again um, and stayed there. Um, Sean approached, and then I approached, um, and hit the suspect. I covered. Um, and he's down. Now. I he's down now. Mm -hmm. I immediately radioed for um, the shots fired, and I needed an ambulance on my radio. It's right, right here. And then, um, and then, kind of covered Sean. Sean went up, um, handcuffed him. Um, I do recall after the shots went off, um, the suspect. I, I believe he muttered something after the two shots. There was two shots that went off from Sean's rifle. I believe the suspect may have muttered something after the shots, but I don't. I have no idea what it was. My right ear was ringing. Um, mm -hmm. It was completely numb. Mm -hmm. Um, that's where the rounds had gone off. So if, if he said or if he said anything or muttered anything, I I, I would I wouldn't be able to tell you. And again, that's after the shots were fired that you heard him yeah. possibly say anything. Yes. Okay. How's your ear now? It's that's okay now. It, um, it any, was ringing off and on for probably about two days. Yeah. Did you see anybody forward or anything? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. No. Um, are you an admin lead now? Yes. David, okay. And that's just department protocol typically is the, the way they explain it to you? Correct. Okay. Um, okay, he's down. Um, Sean Cuffin, you call him for medical assistance and just just go from there. You're still there for a while. What else is Yeah. Um, at that point, <clears throat> we started to, um, the other officers began arriving on scene. Um, and and uh, my officers are are great at, uh, at thinking what needs to be done and, and doing it. Um, every once in a while, someone would ask me, you know, what what they wanted, or what they want, or what I wanted them to do. And um, um, basically, I was directing them to get everybody out of the store, mm -hmm. but contain outside so that we had witnesses. Gotcha. And we, you know, I wanted I wanted the people out, right. but not to leave. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to give them direction um, to to evacuate people out, but but maintain our, our witnesses once we got out there. Sure. Cordon off the scene. Um, somebody brought in tape. I can't tell you who it was. Good I didn't enough on that. Yeah. Brought in tape and started cordoning off the area. Mm -hmm. um, I remember Sean yelling for Stall to go get his first aid kit, which was a great move. Mm -hmm. um, so Officer Stall after. Um, when it responded to his vehicle, his cruiser got our first aid kit, and um, Officer Sean Williams and Officer Matt Stahl began attempting um, first aid uh, by using a tourniquet. Okay. Um, so suspect bleeding. Suspect bleeding. Um, uh, I would I would call it kind of a labor breathing. Okay. Um, I could I could see that. His elbow was shattered, and I could see that he was on his belly. Mm -hmm. He was cuffed, mm -hmm. and I could see that he was bleeding from another location. It wasn't it wasn't necessarily his elbow, mm -hmm. um, but it was clear that there was other injuries. I don't know where, okay. but it was coming out of probably this area okay. because the blood was starting to pool there. Um, he. Um, his eyes were open for for um, you know some some time, but then uh, they started to roll back in his head, and his breathing started becoming more okay uh, laborious.
right. And then uh, anything more pertinent at that point? Can we ask you some more questions until the EMS arrives as far as the medical? You guys did what you could. EMS does arrive, correct? EMS arrives. Um, and af after they after they arrived, um, you know, my role my role became more of one um, where I needed to um, deal with the officer that was involved at this point. Mm -hmm. um, medical medical was there, and so um, I, I wanted to get the officer away from the scene at that point, and um, I secured his rifle. Mm -hmm. um, I gave him my rifle, mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> I, I called for another medic for him. You gave who your rifle? Um, Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams. Okay, so you took his rifle because it would have been involved in the shooting? Correct. Okay, and what's the purpose of giving him yours? You know, I was always trained as a supervisor. You, uh -huh. you know, you, you you don't leave them unarmed, but but you switch if you have to, and give them give them your okay. weapon, okay, so that he doesn't feel like mm -hmm. he's 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 weaponless. Okay, so that matches up to your training. Correct. Okay. Um, to take us a little further. What else? Okay, I secured his rifle um, outside in the um, rear of my cruiser. Mm -hmm. Um, and and my, the rest of my interaction really dealt with um, Sean Williams, Officer Sean Williams, and, and, and seeing to it that he um, got medical attention and was transported to the hospital. Um, it should probably be noted that Sergeant Molnar um, was leaving um, work at the time this went out. Okay. He was still at the building, mm -hmm. and so he heard it over the radio and immediately came up to the scene. Mm -hmm. um, Sergeant Molnar um, did a great job at taking over um, a command, um, incident command at the scene, okay. um, since I was in no position to be doing that. Okay. Um, and he orchestrated a lot of the efforts between us, the fire department, mutual aid who was responding in, Green County Sheriff's saw deputies Big responded. Response. Yeah. 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 Okay. We got Fairborn, right. Green County, I think Wright State may have come. Okay. So I mean there was a lot. Yeah. You know, we had a medical issue that was also going on um, from the from a female mm -hmm. um, who had gone down because of a medical issue, completely unre unrelated as far as the shooting's concerned, mm -hmm. but was there at the same time. So we had we had two two people that were having unrelated medical um, some incidents of some kind, and then the suspects. So you're saying so there was three total. We three had total three. We had we had three medics responding to those three people, mm -hmm. and then I was calling for a fourth medic for Sh Officer Sean Williams. Okay. So we, it well, was kind of a big scene. Was was calling them for Williams? Uh, was he? actually hurt or the no. protocol of the I, I, again I've always been trained mm -hmm. that um, that that's what that's right. what you do when an officer is in an, involved in a shooting is okay. you, you call call yep. a medical you don't know what's going on um, mm -hmm. internally with with them right. you don't you don't you just want it's precautionary sure. but also um, you know it's a, it's a traumatic incident so post traumatic right. you want to make sure that they're well taken care of yep. Um, check his vitals, transport to the hospital, mm -hmm. and you just get him checked over. So it was procedural, okay. but that's how I was trained. Okay. The, uh, so when you were referring to those extra um, medical instances, you had the suspect, yes. um, the young lady who unfortunately passed away of the heart condition, right. and then what was the other situation? You know, I learned later that um, there, was a, there was another female who was pregnant? Okay, and you were, so you don't have to comment on anything those you learn you learn later. You didn't. You yeah. weren't directly aware or involved in any of the other two medical. I incidents. knew. I knew that medics were responding for people yeah. that were that were having some kind of medical issue, okay. but I wasn't involved in those at all. Good enough. Um, I, the only thing I did was um, I contacted Officer nicely at one point to make sure that they had an AED for the girl that was having a heart attack, and she responded affirmative. They were trying to AED on her. You, you made that call to the radio? Yes. That? Okay. And did you say, so you said you didn't call in on your response to the scene? To, were you on the radio during that entire time for anything else? While I was responding to the scene? Yeah. 
only only to no i think my my first broadcast was to tell them that i was on scene ok yeah ok and we'll we're going to play some radio traffic for you can identify yourself and and go back and refresh your memory on what's occurring um... we're going to take you through it several times today with a lot of questions the uh... uh... but i did want to point out you we are here at the time of your choosing because you have closing on your house today, correct? I do. Okay. What time does that occur? One. Okay. And it's about uh, 10.45 right now, so we um, expect to have you out in plenty of time for that, but I want to make note of that, that uh, we try to accommodate your time. We I try to accommodate getting I in appreciate here. that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's, let's get through what we can here. The... Uh, and did, uh, did you make a verbal statement to the department after the incident? Yes. Okay. Was it verbal or written? Verbal. Okay. And uh, recorded? Yes. Okay. Is there anything that you recall about that verbal statement that you feel uh, is needs to change at this time? I don't think so. Okay. And I know it's been a couple of days. I know it's a uh, uh, very significant and potentially traumatic incident. So, you know, we understand any any variability on that. Um, but no no written statement whatsoever, correct? No. Okay. And they just, as a department, they just took your statement and then put you on admin leave as a matter of department protocol? Correct. Okay. Dave, going back to the response, the uh, you stated that you were told there was a suspect armed in the Walmart and believed to be in the corner of the pet section or in the pet section, um, appeared to be loading a gun, and it, it, the gun appeared to be a rifle. Correct. Am I missing anything significant on those details? Um, at one point, I, I, I believe I remember Sean Williams getting on and asking dispatch over the radio if... Um, to confirm that he was waving it or pointing it at people, and okay. dispatch said affirmative. Okay, and that's and that's pretty significant. Okay. Yes, sir. Staying with that for a minute, and uh, um, I apologize, we might jump a little bit, but since we're on communications, when you and Williams are entering the store, you didn't really state that you guys had any verbal communication. Did Did you guys discuss anything going through? Um. As far as me and him before we entered, is that what you're? Asking? Yeah, before, during, and and. Like game plan type scenario. You know, I I don't. I don't recall a lot of verbal communication between. We both just kind of knew what to do. <laughs> you, heard, you heard the same thing on the radio. You knew where you were going. We knew, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we both we both knew the area. We both. You know, I, I parked over by the garden area, so I think uh, Sean had parked on the other side, mm -hmm. and when he saw me pull up, he worked my way, walked my way. Yep. I think, I think I'm think i only speculating that um, he, he figured that's where we were going to go in. Okay. So he came to me, mm -hmm. um, but then those doors were locked, and so um, you there wasn't a lot of verbal communication between us. As soon as we entered the store, we were both communicating with other people, right. trying to. I don't. I don't remember if. Fair if, enough. Fair if enough. He, yeah. If he, if we had any type of communication, I, I'm not recalling that. And your point being, seemingly, you guys have trained for situations like this, and there was. We had just left. trained for situations. Like Give me this. something on that. What would you? Um, think? We had just had a. Some people call it an active shooter training. Some people call it a quad training. Okay. Um, we had just gone through that. Um, our training records can reflect the, the exact date, sure. but it was um, within a month. I think we did it um, July. <sighs> My platoon was a Thursday in July. Um, possibly even the, the 24th or something. Okay. But, I don't have my my phone on me. So that's no problem. Yeah, those details we can verify later. That yeah. Is, is so we had. So you can imagine. I mean, it was within. Yeah. Week. We had just been through this this training. Twenty days with it. I mean, obviously. It was a eight hour block of yeah. of quad training. Who ran that? Do you remember? 
Uh, Officer Suki runs that training for Through this in department? In-house, yes. Okay, in-house. Yeah. Had you had active shooter training before that time? No, we, we have it annually. Okay. Um, building clearings involved in that at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. Building clearing. In fact, that was most most of this training mm -hmm. um, th this time was building okay. training. Okay. And you or said building clearing, I'm sorry. Good enough, yeah. You said that your uh, platoon, you called your platoon, is that what you said? Correct. Okay, your platoon was involved in this training, and Sean Williams is a part of your platoon? Um, yeah, he he is on my, well, um, he would have been with an, another platoon for this training. Okay, but he's had this training recently as well. Oh, yeah. You guys yeah. have it annually? Yeah. Okay. Um, he's not directly under my platoon, even though he works four hours with me. It's, it. uh, he works on a power shift, so it's okay. a little different. You don't recall any communication with him walking through um, as you were clearing aisles, um, even to the point of, you know, you, you stated at a certain point you told the suspect put the weapon down or put the gun down. Yeah. Um, did you have any communication directly with Officer Williams between that time at all that you recall? No. Okay. The, uh, do you recall stating either again put the gun down or put the weapon down? Do you recall if you had stated it multiple times, one time? I, I know I stated it one time mm -hmm. and I know that I told him to get on the ground one time. And this is before, you told him to get on the ground before any shots were fired? I, I believe so. Okay. I believe I told him to get on, get on the ground, or no, I'm sorry. I told him to, I know for a fact that I told him to drop the gun. That was my first communication with him. Okay. Um, that's when he, he kind of shockingly mm -hmm. glanced over. That was, his, that was the first time he, he knew we were there. Okay. And I know that, that Sean um, again told him to. Right. Okay. Do you remember what Sean said? It was drop your weapon, okay. something to that effect. Do you recall if he repeated it once, twice? I only remember once. Okay. How close in succession um, did he repeat commands after you, to the best of your recollection, Dave? Um, time's tough under, under these circumstances. Absolutely. I, I mean, it, it was it was fairly close. Okay. It all happened. It all happened very very quickly. I okay. mean, and we're kind of to the meat of it here, and we. There's a lot of other kind of accessory questions, and, and I'm, I'm going to ask you some things that I, you've already stated, and I want to assure you I'm not trying to trip you up. It's so we get a clear understanding of what occurred, and it is tough to go through, especially in a, in a critical incident like that, and, and have you know a very solid recollection of all the key minor details. Um, when you, according to what you said, you first you made first observation of the suspect before Williams did. Williams is on the other side of you. Is that not accurate? Yeah, he was He was more to my rear as we okay. were going down the aisles, Clarence. Okay, so to the best of your recollection, you would have seen the suspect first before, and you, you, you don't have to speak for Sean Williams, he's not here, right. but in your mind, you probably saw the guy before Williams did. I believe so. Okay, so your command came first. Right. Um, did you run hot to the scene? Your, your vehicle, did you run hot to the scene? Code 3, yeah. Okay. Uh, sirens, lights, everything yeah. going. Um, did did you see anybody anybody else's vehicle hot? You know, Williams was there, but, you know, he ran hot. Was his lights still on? Um, no, I don't know, because he, he was right there. Okay. So I don't even know okay. if he responded Code 3 or not. He was, okay. he was over by the BP, which is located right beside Walmart. Okay. So he would have been literally in the same parking lot. Okay. And he parked um, over on the east side, yeah. towards the east side. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I never even saw his vehicle. And yeah. when I got there, I pulled up. Yeah. I immediately started to get out and, and go to the vault to mm -hmm. get my weapon as he was walking up to me. Okay. Is is this a a call like this? Um, is this something that uh, changes your mind frame when you get a call of a armed suspect in a in a public store? Absolutely. Okay. The when when you received that call, did you um, immediately think to yourself that you may have to engage an armed suspect? Yeah. Okay. So you ran out to the scene for that, you weren't running covertly? No. 
Okay. And there was a couple times where um, I toggled my siren. My lights were on, but I toggled my siren on and off. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it's kind of in my mind, it's kind of a it's kind of a toss up because you know you you have to clear intersections. You have you can't be a traffic hazard on your on your way there. Mm -hmm. But it's always in the back of my mind when I'm going to something like this that you know if I run up blazing with my siren. Um, you can, you can turn uh, a situation into a, very quickly turn a situation into like a, a hostage situation yeah. um, at some point. There's you no know. strict training black and white that says you respond to this type of scene this way or this because you have imperfect information coming in on the radio. You know you've got an armed guy where there's civilians and possibly dozens if not hundreds of them in a Walmart. You're doing what you think is the best under the situation and get in there and let people know you're coming. Yeah, and, and at the same time, you know, you, um, you know, I, I didn't want to turn. If if you, um, it, for for instance, it's like you're responding to um, a potential bank robbery. Mm -hmm. You go in blazing with your si lights and siren. You can turn a bank robbery into a hostage situation very quickly right. if you come in, you know, with your siren on. So. As I'm responding, I, I toggled the siren yeah. on and off to try to, I guess, just try to prevent something like that from happening. Great. Um, and the you stated also, so again, the suspect, to your knowledge, at least at that point, was in the front of the store. Yes. Near the front of the store. You're arriving front. in the front of the store. Yes. You're arriving hot, so your sirens are going. So that's an indication the police are on the way. Yeah, okay. but I had killed the sirens. But you know, as when I got into the parking lot, I killed the sirens. Okay, um, but you entered the parking lot first before you shut them down. To the best of your recollection. Yeah. Okay. And as soon as I jumped over the Pentagon intersection, as I'm, you know, I was coming down Commons. Okay. So I'm coming down Commons, and um, and when I got through the Pentagon, that's a busy intersection. Mm -hmm. So I got through the Pentagon intersection. Entered the Sam's. It would be the Sam's parking lot first. Okay. Um, I believe I shut my sirens down at that point. Okay. Still had the lights going, but I shut the sirens down. What was the reason for shutting them down? The sirens, mm -hmm. just like I stated. I, you know, I'm approaching the scene, okay. and um, you know, just from a tactical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. The and when you enter the store, you. Uh, Stated that you pretty much immediately were yelling at people to take cover. Yeah, the um, first person we met, we came to was the was the greeter. Okay. Um, and and I could tell the greeter had no idea what was what was going on. Okay. What what was your tone like? What was your volume like when you're telling them to take cover? Um, I would say it was a a, a medium tone. I mean, I can have kind of a loud, booming voice anyway. Okay. So I mean, it wasn't—I wasn't screaming okay. at them, but I was—but I was very direct. Okay. And said, "Get down, get cover." Okay. A couple of times. Yes. All right. Did 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 that? So that's in the direct front of the store. I'm assuming registers right there, and so forth. The greeter. Um. No, the register. So you're not even past. You're not even past the greeter area in the in the Walmart, which is the entrance section. You're yeah, the entrance greeter. section. They have. I call them a greeter, but really they stand there and watch people as they're right, leaving. Right. Right. So, um, so the registers, all the registers would have been to our right. Okay. Did you did you say anything further to the people that you encountered at that point? We both were. I mean, we both were were. Um, we're telling people get down, get get cover. I remember I remember at least twice yelling at people to get down and get cover. Okay. And then as we started going back towards the the pharmacy area, um, and subsequently to the pet supply area, mm -hmm. um, it seemed like there was a lot less people. So I so I didn't. Yeah. I, I don't think I engaged anybody else at that point. Okay. And we didn't see anybody else at that point. Okay. Did it seem like anybody was fleeing at that point or anything? I don't remember anybody fleeing at that point. Okay. I was I was pretty focused on the aisles leading up to the pet and then the pet aisle. So my attention wasn't so much what was going on mm -hmm. in the store. It was to my left down the aisles. Gotcha. Pharmacy okay. and then pet. You're doing what you can to tell people there's a situation. You want them to, to be safe. It's uh, sometimes necessary to tell people to evacuate or take cover in those yeah, types of situations. Yeah, we didn't know. Okay. 
the uh, what what uniform did you have on if you did it's, have one? It's our um, it's our summer uniform shirt. Mm -hmm. It's a polo shirt mm -hmm. with um with a badge mm -hmm. on this side, name on this side, police across the back, um, and uh, in big lettering. You threw your vest over the uniform. Um, I did have a tactical vest over. Um, it wasn't zipped up, mm -hmm. so it would have been open still. Okay. Does do you call it your tactical vest as police on the back of it as well? I don't know. Okay. It's not. I don't own it. Okay. And um. And I know, um, yeah, so okay. Sergeant Molnar would know that. It's his best. You come in uniform. You came in um, at least up to the parking lot, like some sergeant telling people to take cover. Um, do you recall ever staying police at any point in the No. Evening? Okay. Um, you felt that your presence was identified at least by uh, what you were wearing. And yes in that situation. Yes. And again, you did tell the suspect to get down. Uh, you just don't you don't recall at that moment saying anything about police. Correct. Okay. Let's let's stick in the uh, let's stick in the corner for a minute, Dave, when uh, when you first encountered the um, the suspect, you said that you could observe he was holding a weapon. Yes. Okay. And you even went to specify that it looked like it could be an AR-15 or that type of that style. Okay. That style of assault rifle. Rifle, yes. Okay. And you had no other information um, than what you've already said about the weapon and what it, what type it may be or the authenticity or, of such weapon. No, uh, I mean it. You know, it, it looked um, it looked exactly like an AR style mm -hmm. rifle that. You know, I've seen a hundred times, and um, the information we were getting from dispatch was that he was possibly loading mm -hmm. the rifle. And that came across radio we, traffic. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When we were responding. And, and you were aware that there was a, a witness. I think you even stated that there was a witness right there giving information to dispatch. A witness in the store. We had yeah, dispatch. we had a 911 call. Our 911 caller was okay. still um, yeah. online with with dispatch. Okay. Dave, we're almost three days from the incident now. Um, some of this has been released in the media. Um, are you aware at this point what that weapon was? Yes. Okay. When did you first become aware of that? I um, I got a call from Sergeant Molnar. It was, I think it was later that night um, after I was already home. Okay. At any time during your response, Prior to the shooting, did anybody indicate to you he's holding the pellet gun? No, no. Okay. In fact, when I left the scene to go to the hospital with um, Officer Williams, mm -hmm. um, I was still under the impression that it was a real AR-15. And that's how long after the, the shooting incident? We're we talking an hour. We're we talking. Oh yeah, I. You know, if the if the shooting occurred somewhere around eight. 8.20 mm -hmm. p.m. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wasn't released to go home until after midnight. Okay, so hours yes. before you even... Okay. I had, yeah, I had no idea before it was they, a polygon until I got a call at home. Right, and it, it sounds like, Dave, you did um, everything you were trained to do as, as far as the uh, uh, response after the shooting, um, and you left it up to uh, the incident commander coming on scene. They secured it. You guys had secured the suspect. Yeah. There's no other suspects involved that you could that you could identify. So, as far as you know, everything was secured. Somebody had eyes on the weapon on the ground. Nobody. The, the priority wasn't to check that weapon at that time or clear that. It was right. to get medical attention for the suspect. Right. Well, that's not accurate. Right. Yeah. That's, okay. That's accurate. We had roped off the area. Um, you know, we had we had um, given attempted first aid to the suspect. Got him removed. Um, then my, my attention turned to getting the officer um, medical attention because the scene was secure at that point. We had mutual aid that was being called in mm -hmm. to do um, secondary searches of the, the building to ensure there was no other suspects and, and no other problems and try to, um, and try to get people, more people evacuated because there was, we were still getting reports that people were were still locked in the pharmacy area. Mm -hmm. We not, I don't think we ever found them, so I don't know where the delay came from. Mm -hmm. But but we we kept getting calls from people that were hunkered down in the pharmacy area. Okay. And and 
I don't, I don't know what happened. Okay, well, uh, that was obviously they got out at some point. Right. But, but yeah, that's right. a kind of chaotic scene we're dealing with. Right, right. Lots of people on Walmart at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Uh, Dave, so you're told you're told a suspect has a weapon, and as you responded to the scene, did you have any reason to believe that he wasn't armed? No. You, I never had reason to believe he was armed with a rifle and he was possibly loading that rifle. Okay, and even to the extent where someone said he was waving it at customers. Waving it at, at pointing and or waving it at, at, at customers, okay. at other people. So during, during your response at any time, did you believe that the public may be under threat because of this call? Oh, absolutely. Okay. When you were entering uh, the building, did you at all um, fear for your own safety or take precautions for your own safety? Absolutely. Okay. When you uh, when you round the corner, you see the suspect. Now, did the you knew that you were looking for somebody in the pet aisle holding a rifle? Right. Did you have any other description on the suspect before you entered? You know, I don't remember if um, for some reason I, I I believe I remember dispatch saying it was a black male. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know. So, so your key to that was you're looking for somebody holding a rifle. My key was looking for some. I knew it was. I remember it was a male subject, and they were holding a holding a rifle, and they were in the pet area. Okay. The you made the first call to have the suspect put the gun down. The first uh, command to him. Yes. Um, Williams made the secondary command same or similar. Yes. And then he fired. Yeah, and and at one point I I told him to get on the ground. Okay. And, and whether and whether that was as the shots were going off or whether it was before the shots were going off, I do remember saying that. Did the suspect immediately comply with your command? He he didn't comply with anything we said. Okay. After he was startled, he began darting to his right, mm -hmm. to my left, mm -hmm. and. Um, and taken up some kind of, it's hard to describe how, how he, uh, how he reacted, mm -hmm. but the best I can say or describe it, it was, it was a startled reaction mm -hmm. and then it was a, a movement as though he was either going to take off running or he was going to get, he, he was going to seek cover behind that immediate aisle, that mm -hmm. first aisle. Something to that effect, but he was but he was darting as he was moving, mm -hmm. while he was still at low ready with the rifle. Okay, still had it in his hands like this. Okay, and he he kind of turned mm -hmm. and and um and began moving in that direction, and in in my mind, um, I'm thinking there's no way we can we can allow someone who's already waved and pointed this gun at people possibly loaded and you know a, an assault rifle mm -hmm. to go to, to get out of our contained area and get into the general public where I know there's all kinds of people mm -hmm. so your your perception of was he didn't comply you, you gave him what you thought were specific orders he wasn't complying the orders were repeated and then Williams fired twice okay did you recall hearing it twice yeah you recall? okay um, Let's stay on that for a minute, Dave. The uh, why didn't you fire? Um, you know, like I said, I I I took up a little bit more what I felt was a tactical position behind the aisle, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, when you do that, if the suspect moves, you you have less of a vantage point. Okay. Um, he moved to a position where. My line of fire decreased as he went to his right, my left. Okay. Even though I was in a little bit, I would say more of a a tactical position mm -hmm. behind behind cover, mm -hmm. um, I lost that line of sight when he mm -hmm. when he went that direction. Okay. Where Sean Sean was towards the middle of the aisle, mm -hmm. maybe in a less tactical position for him as far as defensively, mm -hmm. but. He was in a. He had a better line of fire. Okay. He didn't. He didn't lose the suspect like I did. Now, had he continued, or had had Sean not been able to, um, to 
to shoot him before he made it i would have been in a better position to get to that next aisle over ok but he but he dropped before he got there ok did did anything uh... what other what other uh... seventeen year old veteran of law enforcement you've had a ton of training uh... what other specialty training have you have you had personally uh... do you qualify every year on your firearm every year ok are you qualified on the AR-15 that you carry ok uh... you just took active shooter and you do that every year at least for the past several years many years yes it's become an issue yeah uh... i've been on the the SWAT team uh... area SWAT team i've been i've been on that fourteen years ok did anything uh... that you did yourself that night violate any of the training that you've had no did anything that you saw Williams do including firing his weapon at the suspect violate any training that you that you had or that you know that he has had no ok did you feel he was justified in pulling the trigger at that yes. point ok the um, how, how long have you been uh... could you estimate i used to do the um, run active shooter training for the attorney general's office too in my recollection um, well, uh, let's say i know approximately when, when that all started how, how long going back do you think like your department got more involved in saying we're going to have annual active shooter training has it been every year of your seventeen years no 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 okay um, Is you, it, as you know i mean um, Columbine changed a lot. So, you know, I, I would say shortly after law enforcement recognized that we can't do what we did at Columbine, that's when quad training first yeah. came out. Right. Um, our department's very, um, very proactive on on our on our training, and I can't imagine um, as soon as that as soon as law enforcement community took a, a different position after Columbine and started instituting that quad training, I, I would say it, it would have to be very shortly after that that okay. we started training that way here. And there's and there's uh, even some schools like my niece's school just finally started the Alice training, and we've known that schools have been doing that for you know five, seven, ten years or whatever you call it. But you know the the run high fight instead of the the break and cover. So it's a different different world basically than. Um, um, the days were, were you at ever any point in your in your training, going back 17 years, trained to secure a scene, mobilize outside, and then come up with a plan to go inside? Um, well, well, yes. Okay, and that's uh, is it fair to say, or you tell me, has that has that approach changed in your 17 years? Yeah, that that approach has has evolved okay as as critical incidents have you know have enlightened yeah the law enforcement community on how we, we we've needed to change that right so once so possibly it's going to back seven, I'm not asking this uh, the date of 17 years ago but possibly in that time or you're at least aware going back law enforcement used to have a certain approach that was thought to be a best practice was stay outside keep everybody from getting hurt and we'll come up with a plan out there yeah. That's more of a pre-Columbine type of uh, process. And, and so is it fair to say, is that what you're getting at, Dave? Is it fair to say that now that um, officers, are ex first responders, are expected to engage the shooter? Yes. Okay. And is that what you feel like you did that night? Absolutely. Okay. Dave, when the, you, you said you remember the suspect going down. And to your recollection, that's after the shots were fired. Correct. Okay. And he gets back up. He he at least attempted to. Okay. Um, I remember I remember thinking in my mind whether he had actually hit him or not because he went down initially and then um, almost started to struggle to get back up again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying. To, go, go ahead. ahead. You you go ahead. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember if I if I started to go back towards that other aisle when he um, I thought I thought that I did that second tried to I glanced towards that second aisle mm -hmm. to see whether he was going to get up and start running because that would have that would have been more my responsibility at that point if he 
if he had done that because I was I was on that side I would have had a, a better angle of that second aisle than Sean did out in the, the, okay. the, the first immediate aisle. Uh, understood. Um, and understanding again of all that was encapsulated in those brief moments that night. Do you recall if the when the suspect went down? Was he still armed at the time? Do you recall that? I I think he dropped the I think he dropped the rifle after he was hit. Okay. So he's hit and he's down. He looks to be getting back up. Um, did you? At the time, you already answered this day, but did, at the time you saw the suspect with the weapon, did you think the suspect was a threat? When he had the weapon? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. Um, when he get, goes down and he gets back up, was he potentially still a threat to you, even if the gun's on the ground? Is it hard to say at this point what you were thinking at, the, at that time? Of course. Uh, anybody who's, who's willing to put themselves in the position he had done is going to be perceived as a threat by me. Okay. And yet, I mean, we don't know if he's armed with anything else. I mean, if he just because he doesn't have a rifle anymore doesn't mean he's not armed anymore. Right. And even though um, Officer Williamson just fired, the suspect gets back up. You guys don't fire on him again. Uh -huh. He goes back down his own volition or some, or somehow. Correct. Okay. What's the? Why didn't you guys fire again? Um, we could see clearly at that point that. Um, that he was no longer a threat. Okay, so you're, you're, are you trying to say he went down very quickly after he got back up? Yeah. Okay. It, it happened very quickly. He okay. struggled to try to to get back up and then and went right back down again and stayed down. Okay, so so that's when we approach. So when he's getting back up, he's still a potential threat, and that's in your mind. But then he's going down right away, so it changed it pretty quickly. Right. Right. Up? Because okay. because in my mind, I'm thinking. Did he did he get hit? Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if he had gotten hit because he's starting to get back up again. Mm -hmm. But then he goes right back down again, and so I thought, I guess he did. I mean, okay, yeah, this is all happening with you know, we're, we're, yeah, we're within well, split second. We're well aware. <laughs> Half we're second. Well aware. We appreciate you walking through it a bunch of times. I know it's difficult to uh, uh -huh. to do. Um, Dave, do you have do you have any prior involvement in shooting incidents? No. Okay. I mean, it? I've I've been on shooting incidents, but not um, not to this degree where I'm actually involved in the shooting incident. Okay. You know? All right. So, well, take me there for so have you have you you've arrived after a shooting has occurred, or you've right. been there? Have, have you observed other officers shooting? Have you been on scene when another officer is shot? No, I okay. the, probably I'm probably the closest one was um, our our SWAT team responded to. Um, a call up at Huber Heights mm -hmm. where um, a sniper had shot um, a sh uh, had shot a suspect. Okay. Um, and we in in my unit, um, the Beaver Creek element uh, um, arrived shortly after. Okay. Um, the man was still down, was Got still it. laying there. Um, you never fired a weapon on another person. No. Okay. Uh, Dave, we actually have uh, uh, the department had you and Officer Williams take a uh, urine test, toxicology test, yes. and those results came back. Um, were you drinking at all during that day or evening? No. Are you a drug user at all? No. You weren't using any drugs at all that day or evening? No. Were you well rested that night? Did you feel good that, that day? What time did your shift start? 7 p.m. 7 p.m., so you only been on shift for an hour and 20 minutes roughly when this right. call came in. Right. How was the lighting in the store? Lighting was, was bright. Right, regular Walmart lighting. Correct. For a little bit. Yeah. Nothing dim about it. You felt like you had a good observation of what was occurring at the yeah. scene. Okay. I think what we'll what we want to do is uh, we want to listen to radio traffic with you one. We want to show you the uh, the video, but we got there's hundreds, a hundred plus cameras in Walmart, yeah. and we have got the video of the suspect in the aisle and what occurs. Mm -hmm. The you guys aren't on the same frame in that video. All you see is the suspect. Mm -hmm. Only 
partial view that we have of you guys coming nearby is uh, it shows your uh, bottom half and we can see put them kind of side by side and show what's occurring. We're going to run that so you can just go through it again with the you know um, help of seeing it to refresh your memory and and re-explain a little bit just about that little brief part of that incident. But I'm going to let Brent uh, do you want to do you have any questions to ask before we do that? Yeah. Do you mind if I call you Dave? That's fine. All right. I didn't know if you preferred David or no. Nah, okay. Um, and you'll have to apologize. I'm going to follow up one thing. I was writing pretty quickly mm -hmm. as as you were answering questions. Um, and if I'm going to ask questions, I'm not intending to trip you up in any way. It's just because I may have not heard or fully understood what you were saying. Okay. I understand. Do you need to take a break? Do you need to get water no. or something? Yeah. Get you a drink. I'm good. Let's go. Okay. Um, and some of these go all the way back to the beginning. Um, the call comes in through dispatch. Uh, officers were sent to Walmart. Do you recall which officers were sent or who dispatch sent? No. Okay. You'll probably recognize it when, when I, you hear I, that. I will. When you hear that. I remember, oh, I remember yeah. Sean. I don't remember if dispatch sent um, Officer Williams, um, Sean Williams. Immediately, but I but I remember shortly after the dispatch, he called out on scene. Okay, I mean he was right there. He was he, yeah he was basically right, right, right there. Yeah. Um, so that response time was real quick. Yeah. Um, you got there. Um, you you noticed that uh, and correct me again if I'm wrong that Officer Williams had an AR with him. Correct. And you got an AR from the back of of your trunk, correct? Correct. Did you two discuss why an AR was chosen? No. For, for that particular response? Okay. I don't recall any any conversation with them about that. Why was what was your decision to, to use the AR? We knew we knew that uh, the suspect um, was was armed with a rifle based on the 911 caller into our dispatch center, and that he was possibly loading that AR rifle. Okay. So I have. I don't. I don't recall that it was actually an AR rifle, but dispatch said a rifle. You, you knew he had a, a rifle. A rifle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at the point the decisions made, uh, the subject in the Walmart has a rifle. You you are taking a rifle in with you as well. Correct. Okay. Um, some of these questions I've gotten answered, so apologize. I apologize for reading over some of these. No. Uh, You and Officer Williams went in tandem. Yes. Uh, were you stacked as you were going in? He was. Um, he was behind me. Okay. So yes. And the reason for going in that particular way? Um, well, I mean, we went in in tandem okay. from a tactical standpoint. Okay. I mean, that's that's how we've been. That's how we've been trained. That's how you've been trained. Um, but why I was in front of him, or why he was behind me? It's just the way it it's just the way it worked. unfolded. Okay. We never we didn't discuss me I'll be in point or you know you watch the rear. We didn't discuss anything like that. We just reacted. Okay. Again, I'm going to flip through these because um, Dave has followed up with some of the questions already that I had as I was as we're going through the interview. I apologize. Okay. Um, Dave covered, um, you made a verbal recorded statement to the department. Yes. Correct? Yes. Are are you or have you been required to make a written incident summary? No. Okay, that hasn't that request hasn't been made. No. Okay. I didn't some departments are different. Some people yeah. want a statement, then they they want a, a summary of what what transpired. Right. Okay. We may get to that point, but we have You're not had, there yet. Right. Okay. As you approached the pet area and taking a position of cover, how long did you stage there before you engaged verbally the suspect? Um, it was almost immediately. Almost immediately. Yeah, as soon, as soon as I rounded that corner aisle, the end cap, and, and saw the suspect, I immediately started uh, verbal commands.
from the put down the rifle than we've done the gun. We've gone over that in great detail about what you said and what you're, and not only what you said but what, what you heard or recall Officer Williams saying as well. Yeah. Okay. Dave, did you know the suspect? No. Have you learned his name since? Yes. And uh, that's no other recollection. You never encountered him before. Never. After shots were fired, and you and Officer Williams are approaching the, the sus subject, he's down on the ground. I assume you got close to what was, you know, the weapon that he was carrying at the time. Yes. Okay. How close did you actually get to it? I I was um, right right by it, within a foot or two. Okay. From from where it was laying. And at that time, when it was laying on the ground, could you determine it was anything other than a fully operating AR type uh, assault rifle? No. Okay. I didn't inspect it and um, when I glanced down at it as it was laying there it appeared it appeared to be an AR rifle a, a standard 223 AR style rifle okay but I, I did not pick it up I never touched it I didn't inspect it I didn't even look at the barrel even I just glanced down at it um, you know my focus at that point really was not on what kind of rifle was this my focus was on the scene and what we were trying to do. Okay. The first aid, taking care of the officer, getting the people out of Walmart, cordoning off the area. So whether the whether the the rifle was you know authentic or whether it was real well, wasn't. I mean, it, it crossed my mind. I, I'll, I'll admit it. It kind of crossed my mind at one point. But when I glanced at it, it looked like a real rifle, and I just assumed it was a real rifle. It crossed your mind after it was you said afterwards. It was down. Yeah, afterwards, as we're as the Correct. scene is is starting to clear out, um, I know Walmart sells um, pellet rifles that look like real rifles, and I also know Walmart sells real AR rifles. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. It's going to sound like a crazy question, but the, the rifle didn't have an orange tip. No. Yeah. That would, and the reason for having an orange tip and your, you know, professional experience as a law enforcement officer is? That it's a toy, some sort of a toy rifle. Right. Um, pal and, you know, power guns don't, and real rifles don't, and this one did not. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I have if you want to go through the audio or the video. Yeah, and uh, just uh, I want to follow up on one thing. You, two things actually. Williams handcuffed the suspect after he was down. Yes. It's clear he was shot. Yes. Is that department protocol to to cuff him? Yes. I mean, there's there's uh, several schools of thought. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know of any policy or procedure that pertains directly to that action, but I do know just based on my training, there are several schools of thought about that. Um, the the main one that I would subscribe to is that, you know, if you have a suspect and you have a scene where the suspect is obviously dead mm -hmm. based on rigor, decomposition, mm -hmm. um, things like this, um, there's not a need to secure a person like that. Mm -hmm. The scene, leave the scene alone, leave the evidence where mm -hmm. it's at. Um, however, if you have a scene such as this one where the suspect is not dead mm -hmm. and he's not, he's certainly not obviously mm -hmm. dead, that you do secure um, the suspect. And, and, and at this point when he was cuffed, he was not dead. He was breathing, his eyes were open, in any case, he's down. And he had already gone down and back up you, at this a, point and then back down right. again. So and you're not a doctor. You don't know if he's no. armed or something else. No. And just for any typical circumstance, it wasn't just this circumstance. In your mind, it's somewhere along the line you've been trained or guided to say it's a good idea to handcuff a suspect down whether or not you think he's not coming back up or not. Right. Unless you're a thousand percent sure of your own safety. Right. So regardless of who that suspect was, you were going to cuff a, a suspect who had just been engaged. And, Absolutely. And down. Okay. Yeah. Um, and at any time, 
during that night we got very specific about the gun but uh, immediately during before during and immediately after the instant incident did you fully believe in your mind that Williams had shot a uh, armed suspect yes okay and um, you know, the classification of a pellet gun can vary. It's, it's uh, definitely considered a weapon. But again, you, even though we say armed, you believe at that time he was armed with a fully operating, whatever type of two, two, three round, anything, uh, firearm. Absolutely. Okay. Any more follow-up right now, Brian? No. Okay, Dave. What uh, the the tra the audio traffic is short. Um, and the video is actually, the part we're going to show you is pretty short too. Do you want to take a quick break and get something to drink a while? No, okay. I think we're going to do the audio first. Okay. Listen to that. And then what I was doing here was staging this, uh, we've had this stage, but it keeps this, this media player we've got keeps dropping off if it's not um, activated quick here. Is this our This is going to be our your, yeah, yeah. Okay. And this starts at uh, 2022, so 8.22 p.m. that evening according to your radio. Um, clock. Let me see. Fine. So these, the vinyl on these things isn't great. Let's see what we can hear. Ready? Yeah. Good to go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got to follow. Them. What do we say, Brad? Around around 40 or 40. 20, 41, 20, 20 41. hours. What we trying to do is get this to run in succession. We're just clicking on it once. I need to oh, hold on. Dave. Hold on. It didn't stick for me that time. Do we right click play? Yeah. Is somebody in the aisle? Oh, affirmative. I have a gentleman who's watching it. They'll be waving it around. Believe it's a rifle. And we see just put some bullets in the dice. I don't believe that's the first one. And it's showing as the first that's one, though. Right. So it's showing 2022, but it's played as 2024. We, we can just do it one at a time. Yeah, let me try this one more time. Now it's 2037. We'll go one at a time. Which is crazy, and I, we apologize, because on my computer, when I do exactly what he's doing, yeah. it plays in sequential order. But mm -hmm. on his computer, which is the exact same kind of computer. We got it to do it twice yesterday that worked. Some uh, kind of software. It's yeah. usually me and technology. Yeah. Okay, here we go, 2022. Okay. 2022. 113 and 96 for Brevin's complaint. Section forty to twenty six. Fifty three sixty three on Boulevard, Walmart, a black male, six foot wearing a blue shirt, blue pants, and the fact section holding a gun, warning. Do you recall that transmission going out that way? Yeah. Um. I mean, it, so it sounds very familiar. Okay. Well, yeah. I expect you remember every detail. From no, I, I, I don't remember all the officers. I, 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 you know. Did you identify anybody from there? Did you know anybody that calls back in and said responding or by voice? I mean, listening to that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I know that, but but I don't, but I wouldn't have recalled that if I wouldn't have listened. I guess so. That's why I asked you earlier if, if dispatch, if you knew who dispatch um, sent. Which, which units they sent. Sound like 113 and 96. Yeah, and then she no. changed it to 46 for okay. some reason. Okay. 113 and 96 are my District 1 cars, which that is in District 1. So they would have been, but I don't know why she would change 46 as a cover car. Um, unless 113 was tied up on something else, I don't remember. Okay. Right. But 113, 96 are my District 1 cars. 46 was a cover car, so it would make sense that she would send 113 and 96. You did not specifically get dispatched to it at any point? No, okay. they don't normally dispatch me unless... Okay. Well, no, they don't. Okay, yeah, right on. There's, there's very few cases where everybody's tied up and something hot comes out mm -hmm. and, they, and they, they'll dispatch me on something like that. Okay, but this was in your purview and maybe even your responsibility to respond to. And your, right. Okay, because yeah. of the seriousness of the situation. Absolutely. Okay. Hold on, Dave. Take your time. Take your time. Um, this was your platoon, correct? Yes. Okay. Start, which is kind of complicated, but Officer Sean Williams is not directly under my platoon, even though, um, even though he does work directly under me 
for four hours every night that I work. He, um, it's hard to explain without showing you our, our personnel chart, mm -hmm. but from 7 when I come on, 7 p.m., until 11 p.m. when he gets off of work, um, from that time period, he's directly under my command, even though he's not technically on my platoon. He's technically um, on Sergeant Molnar's platoon. So does he work swing shift? Yeah, he works from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., okay. which is a little different because my platoon works 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. So there is a four-hour overlap where we work with those, um, there's two. There's two swing. There's two swing. Okay. Uh, we call them a power shift. Right. So there's there's two officers that would normally be on this power shift, and I would I would be under command of those two officers for the for my first four hours, their last four hours. So Sergeant Molnar has him for the most the largest portion of that shift, which you work 12-hour shifts, right? Yes. Okay. And then the last four is so Sergeant three. Molnar would have him when he comes on at 11 a.m. when when an uh, officer. Sean Williams comes in at 11 a.m. He falls under the command of Sergeant Molnar. When Sergeant Molnar leaves at 7 p.m. and I come in at 7 p.m., he falls under my command until he leaves at 11 p.m. What's Molnar's platoon? What number? Do you recall? Two. Two. Okay. And I'm four. All right. Perfect. Sorry. Good. You ready? Yeah. 2032. That's Sean Williams. Okay, and again, so it's 2023. Um, speaking back, we're going to 2032. That's when we know Sean's on scene already. Okay, we'll play that part again. That's his dad. 2023. So is your, you heard that you heard that traffic go out? Yes. And your understanding of what Williams said is what? He confirmed that he's with dispatch that the that the suspect is actually pointing the weapon at people. Okay. And that was your belief at the time. That's that's the instruction you had. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm, this is not a trick question. We just need to make sure. When you said uh, 46 was his dad, you're talking about Officer Williams' dad. Yeah, I have under my command, uh, at least until 11 o'clock, I have Sean Williams and his dad, Chris Williams, both under my command. So 40, you heard 46 get on there and say he's still going to be in route, which I'm fine with. Um, we needed everybody up there eventually. Gotcha. Is Chris, uh, who's a rank officer also? Yes. Okay. He's my canine officer also. Okay. So it's good to have him mm -hmm. on, on any kind of critical incident with the canine. Okay. Is that why she changed it to 46? Because of the canine? No, she wouldn't have done that. Okay. That would be my call, not hers. Okay. Um, you know, I don't I don't know why, why she would um, initially dispatch. Maybe some, she'd probably have to answer that. Yeah, Maybe okay. she saw something in our CAD. We don't have to dwell on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pause it for a second. Did, did you hear the first part of what you said? Or uh, what, who was that speaking? Was that Sir Williams? That was Sean Williams. Okay. And it, the first part sounded muffled, but it sounded like he said... Still eyes on. Yes. Yeah, he's okay. ask, he's asking if the okay. if the caller that she's talking to still has eyes on him because a lot of times, a lot of times our dispatch I mean, they they'll even hang up with people sometimes mm -hmm. you know and, and get off the phone so I th I mean, in this case I think he was trying to confirm mm -hmm. that hey our your caller is still seeing him yeah uh, we we needed to know whether he was going to leave that pet area or, or not right and, and that was important right. So, so you're relying on this information coming in. Right. 
I'm going to, I'm just going to start there from the beginning again. So it's only a couple seconds. Is somebody from Ireland? Oh, from I have a gentleman who's watching it. He's waving it around. Believe it's a rifle. Can you see just put some bullets inside? See if I'm if I'm saying this correctly, what she just said. Um, he asked her to verify there's eyes on him. She said affirmative. Uh, he still sees a guy waving a rifle and he believes he's just putting some bullets inside. Right, so now we know we have a rifle and now we know that he's possibly loading that rifle. Okay. Ready to go on? Yep. I didn't hear that. I didn't fully either. I think I have enough. It's got him first off. That's only me. Yeah. <laughs> Try again. Three yeah. yeah. I'm on team. Yeah, I think you said I'm on I'm three seven. Seventy three seven. Seventy on three seven. Yeah. That's, that's what I would have said. But that that was it was muffled. Yeah. Yeah. Our radios. Uh, they're good, but sometimes. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Seventy on three seven. I mean I'm on I'm on team. So that's dispatch's first to they're advising he's in the black back corner of Pets. I was shot again. And that's where you were advised in that corner of the uh, pet. Did you have knowledge of that beforehand? That that's, that's yeah, they, yeah, they had pulled that. Okay. She was, she was um, relaying that again. Okay. Possibly still talking to them, the okay. caller, the initial caller to confirm. Okay, we go next. 96 or That's Officer Bondi. Ninety six or seven. Twenty twenty five. Okay. He's on scene. Yeah, some of them are quick. Officer Bondi. He's yeah, he's on scene. Forty six or seven. Yeah, Chris is. Okay. Twenty twenty six. That's stall and nicely. Okay. We're still getting people right on scene. I need yeah. a little more. Yeah. That's right now. You're clear. Twenty twenty seven. Um, maybe Sean. It sounded like Sean. Play it again. Yeah. And we we all heard suspect down. Yeah. Okay. This is twenty uh, twenty seven. Suspect now. So you're clear twenty twenty seven. Okay. It sounds like him. Play a little bit after the response here for you. Hey, what's going on, Sean? That's me. You're clear twenty twenty seven. That's, that was um, Chris Williams asking his son, Sean Williams, which corner of the store. Okay. I mean, he, he may not be as familiar with the Walmart mm -hmm. layout okay. as, some, as some of us. Sure. But he's asking what corner of the store, and then that's me asking for an ambulance. Okay, let me just start that again. Hey, which corner of the store? <laughs> you guys can hear an ambulance for who? The suspect. Okay. Go ahead. What you were saying? Um, it, it sounded. It sounded like um, Sean was still in the background giving him verbal commands or something. I don't know. You can. Was that, was that Sean's voice that you? I, it I sounded like someone said, "Get on your back." Yeah. Did that, did that sound? I don't. Weird? I don't remember that okay. happening, but it, it kind of sounds like that might be Sean. Listen to that again. Here we go. <laughs> I hear something on your back. Definitely on your back right after you. It's got to be Sean. Right? We were the only two okay. um, there. Yep. Okay. When, and I'm the one queuing up to okay. ask for the ambulance. All right, here we go. Same, still at 2027 here. You're clear, 2027. Letting me know that he's going to be calling the captain. Okay. Right. That's Furia. 47s. For okay. Furia. Yeah. Next minute, 2028. 
Oh, caution tape. Who was that? So that's I mean, that's for crime scene tape basically to see yeah. the scene. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Come on it. Like that on my head, maybe? No. That sounds like Chris. Okay. So nicely securing the scenes in progress. Securing the scenes in progress. Medics are, Medics are called. called. Okay. Yeah, that Walmart checkup. Okay. Twenty twenty nine. I just. You're close. Twenty twenty nine. Yeah, it was unneeded at this point. I didn't. I I canceled. I didn't want her. We had enough stuff going on without her doing checkups on us. How do you need to take back here in the pet section the first aid kit to if somebody had one? That's all Chris Williams. Do you need it outside? Do you need a first aid bag? Can we get the roll in the front door? Stall. So we are, is that two different people asking for first aid kits? It's yeah, Chris Williams is, is asking for someone outside to get the tape okay. and the, because he's in there with us at that point. Okay. So he's asking for tape and the first aid kit, and um, and that was uh, Officer Stahl, um, who who I don't think he was there at, at that point. Okay. And again, but Stahl is the one that ended up going to get the first aid kit. Okay. And it wasn't you that said that, and uh, no. um, there's three medical situations going on at once. Very quickly, um, are, are you aware of which first aid kit was for who at this point? When people are asking, and don't don't at, speculate if you don't know. At this point, it was for the suspect. I do know that. Okay, and it sounded like the second one they said was um, for a female. No, yeah, and that that was later. Okay, let's see. Let's see that. Okay, first aid kit too. Somebody had one. Okay, now he said first aid kit outside, so I was putting in my head that's where the other lady fell down, or they had her near the. No, she was in. She was inside. He's still. Um, Officer Stahl is is seeing if there's anybody that's still outside because Officer Stahl is now working his way in. Got it. In there, so he's he's trying to see if there's anybody that's still outside that can bring in the first aid kit. I don't think I don't I don't think anybody answered him, and that's why Officer Stahl ended up going to get and why. Right, makes sense. And he did say first aid kit pet, pet section on that first part. Yeah. Yeah. Officer Stahl's the one that came in with it eventually, okay. so he must have gone out himself and okay. gotten it. Good to go. Yeah. Here we go. Twenty twenty nine. Brownlee. Brownlee and Diaz. Those are my District 3 cars. 96. 96. There's a female customer back in the sporting goods section that's having a medical emergency. I need an additional medic car. Little female. You're clear. So that's the first we knew there was another medical okay. emergency going on. Right. So all of that stuff, all that initial stuff, the first medic, the first aid kit, all that stuff, that was all for the, in relation to the suspect. Got it. Yeah. And that's at 2029 right there. It's the, the end of 2029. Um, we're talking at seven minutes after the first uh, call out, and that's a full two minutes after the suspect is down that the uh, female response kicked in. Okay, we'll go to 2030. So you heard that? Yeah, okay, it's still referring to the suspect. That was Sean Williams. And since it's a little broken up, um, it's, it was Sean Williams asking for a tourniquet mm -hmm. for the suspect? Right. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm going to stop you because uh, we haven't established at this point what part of the body or the wound were they using the attorney? It was on the arm. Okay. Um, you know, later on I could tell that most of his bleeding wasn't coming from his arm, but initially we were trying to stop any bleeding we could okay. because we had, I, I'm pretty sure he got hit in both arms. <laughs> so we had, this elbow was pretty much gone. I mean, it was shattered. And then I believe there was another, I believe his other arm was hit also. And then there was blood coming from somewhere other than his, his arms. Okay. Uh, somewhere on, on his body. So when, when we were just trying to stop anything we could. The tourniquet ended up being on his arm. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of attention uh, was given to his medical care and right. response. All right. <laughs> Medics are requesting they can come in and they need to stage. They need to come in. They need to come to the far left pad area. Oh, uh, you're clear. That's 23 miles. So that's medics asking if they need to come on stage. Does that sound like it's likely for they're making sure the scene's cleared, safe for them to come in? Yeah. Okay. 2031. So they were attempting to open the garden area doors for them.
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think it does now? Yeah. Okay. So it looks like we're catching... The walls, I mean, these aisles look so much more narrow than I remember them. It's... I don't know if it's distorted or... It's also, like, it looks short down there. I mean, it, those are called Walmart aisles, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a camera angle. It, you know, those security cameras. But that's, that's what it is. <coughs> Um, where I've got this stage about here, just a couple of seconds after, is where you guys are going to approach from this angle right here. You got to come up this aisle here. Okay. Then these. This isn't the exit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is this is in the garden center, mm -hmm. looking back in. into the yeah. store. Into yes, the store. Yes, yes, I right. gotcha. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's hard for us to turn it around to at first. I'll let you know. Um, yeah, I guess it's both an entrance and an exit if you look at it that way. So we had a different terminology there, and so pet aisles here. What's going to happen, but this is about four minutes ahead and we'll speed it up. Um, we'll have to watch the whole four minutes, but um, suspect's going to come walking up this way. Okay. All right. And this is about the time, 821, where the witness had him, had to make the first call to 911. It is specifying his movements. There's no audio on this, Dave. Yeah. And it's touchy coming get it every couple of minutes. I think we're I think we're about twenty seconds away here. There he comes. And while you're watching, you haven't seen this. Have you seen this video? No. This is the first time you're viewing it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me pause a minute, David. So that was the closest that was the closest you were gonna get of him walking up that way. Um, what what did you just see there? I mean he looks like he's got the he looks like he has a um, his hand up to his Head with his right hand, and then it looks like he has a gun. The rifle. The rifle in his other hand. Yeah. And then you kind of just take a closer look. Let's see if we can get this. Touch. Yeah. Closer thing. Right there. Turn so your your angle's best, and you see him come up here. Is it already playing? It's not playing you know. It would have been if I hit play after I moved the timer. Turn as much as you need to. That's okay. Yeah, he's got the rifle on his left hand. Okay. Maybe he's on the phone. Still just waving the rifle around. Yeah. And People, again, we got other shoppers over here. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to um, say much about me. You're not in. You're not in the store at this time. No. This is still 821. This is just the response call going out initially. This is kind of right now, just for your perspective of what's going on. Right. This is information you only know through a 911 caller, and I'm just showing you guys for your perspective. Yeah. Um, I will tell you this: it does run. Your response comes in just shortly after the um, about 826. The uh, closer to 827 actually, and right now we're only on about 822. We can watch that that whole entire stuff if that's um, helpful for you. But his movements stay relegated to about a, a at max like a 10 square foot area right there in that aisle this entire time. Um, waves the gun around quite a bit, moves it around a little bit. There'll be uh, some. Shoppers that that appear to notice him, and, and uh, one witness uh, stated later that you will you'll see on the video that he did see the guy with the gun. You tell me what you guys want to do. You watch the next two minutes, straight or you can fast forward it. Yeah. Those, those are, we don't mean you can fast forward if you like. It's it's you're out of time. No, go ahead and fast forward it to okay. where we come in. Picture. 
Okay, actually, here's the sense of being the uh, young lady that dies. She's actually in the aisle with the suspect. She sees something. She took. She gave a real hard, long look to him. Just for your information, it's about 2655. Yeah, that's what I know to do. I'm going to try to get both coming in near the same time. Um, I meant to do, hold on. Let's see if I get, I don't think I can get much closer than that. Yes, I can. So we'll do this. Let me start this. in two frames. I mean, yeah. My eyes were bouncing back and forth. Yeah, or, they were. Okay. So did you see you guys coming up on the approach there? I did. I saw us coming okay. up right here. Let's let's try to take one at a time. Okay, we're within 20 seconds here. So watch, watch this one. Pause it if you like um, or not. Get out of the way right before you guys come in. So they're in the garden area now? I mean, yeah, they're. They left pets and went to the garden area. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to always see our feet from that angle. Right. So it's kind of hard. Um, there's no doubt that's you and. Um, is there any doubt that that's you and Williams? No. Okay. And then you would be the um, the officer we see, just the legs we see that come first into frame, closest to the what looks to be kitty litter there. Yeah, you can. I, I have on the uh, departmental. Uh, cargo pants mm -hmm. where Sean Williams was in his bike uniform so you'll see him in shorts okay we're into that issue I've been having here changes what you told us? Um, no. Okay. Um, so again, you approach closest. This is what you were referring to as K litter as your cover, basically. Yeah. The aisle cap, right? Yeah. Okay. And Williams approached from the outside of you. Right. Um, 
as you still recall, if Williams, if you were here on this on this corner here, and again, it's still not responding, but when it does, um, you feel that Williams was at best behind you, maybe a little bit outside back of you when you made your first when we man. when we first approached. He was behind me. Okay. You know, at what point he came mm -hmm. to my right, you know. I'm okay. I think it, he was coming around as I was initially making, making verbal commands. Okay. All right. Watch the suspect screen. There's no clear indication here because you guys aren't seeing, so you gotta mm. just watch his his reactions. And this is clearly a different angle than what you had personally. You don't see it at all no. in this one? No. Not until he's down. This way and it came back. Yeah. Around. Okay. So you didn't see the entirety of when he went down and back up what he described. Like you, you described it. You said there was a point where you lost sight of him. Yeah, because you could see he was headed this direction, mm -hmm. and so I kind of went this way. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. or I'd have a better and vantage came back point. around. Okay. And now I'm yelling at people to do stuff. Right. And again, can I see that again? Absolutely. See as many times as you like. Um, again, your vantage point was quite different. This is coming from the ceiling at, at best of the center, but even a little bit probably to the right of that. You're coming from a low position behind the angled cover and from the left of the suspect. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead just to play when you're ready. No. Slide that over. Comes in just about 15 seconds here. down like you described, he got up like you described, looked to be running back towards Williams yeah. at, at, at a minimum and um, didn't get fired upon again, right. went back down. Um, and that's consistent with uh, with what witnesses described as well. Um, anything else? No, I mean, I, I didn't have the vantage point when he got, I knew he got back up. Mm -hmm. And started head this way, but where I could see, I didn't see. There's Bondi. Um, I couldn't see him getting back up to head back, like as if he was headed back for the weapon. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that part. Okay. Yeah, you were behind here, went this way. And then yeah, because I, I think when he started going that way, mm -hmm. I started focusing on this aisle. So you could see when you were running this this way in this aisle, you could see part of his body at least Barely. extending. So you knew he yes. moved and got up. I knew he had gone down, and then he was getting back up okay. again. Okay. And then I kind of I lost him. Okay. Um, what, what we're here to do is just gather the facts of what you're what you saw, heard, did. We can look at you. You are free to look at as much of this more as you want to go back through it. Um, do Do you need to take him through it anymore? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Do you want to see see more? Did, it, did anything, the key thing is, did anything trigger something more in your memory that changed anything? Not not necessarily. Um, you know, he does, a, he does a lot of waving of the gun mm -hmm. while he is apparently on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I can tell you is when I came around the corner, I never saw any phone mm -hmm. 
in his hand. He appeared to me to be holding the gun, um, and he and and I thought he he had his right hand near the action part of the gun okay. when I saw him. So I don't I don't know. Um, Clearly, his body was turned when you first saw him. He's he's turned facing this aisle this way. Yeah. Your vantage point is this way. Right. So you're not getting a clear picture of what's going on with the with the other arm. Yeah. So whether he's on the he's on the phone, it's it's this way. You're looking at a hot response. Your eyes are going to focus necessarily on the weapon. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's not entirely as you recall. You thought he might have both hands on the weapon. Yeah. Hand, I display. know the right hand. I couldn't see what he was doing with it. Okay. I know the left hand was on the gun. Yeah. I remember that distinctly. Mm -hmm. The right hand, I couldn't. You know, it happened very quickly, but I, but I, I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't see what his right hand was doing. Right. And you did state several times you saw the, um, the gun move up at some point when you guys engaged him, and I hear you're saying that he's at least at a minimum swinging the gun. Yeah, he's swinging the gun all over the place. I didn't see that, you know, obviously, but yeah, you didn't see the rest before that. Yeah, I didn't see what he was doing before that. Um, but he does. He did move the gun. When you gave commands, he did turn towards you at first. Yeah, and like a yeah, okay, kind of like a startled motion. Okay. Anything else to add or change to that? Okay. Well, I, when did you realize the phone was involved? When did you realize that there was a phone? Just did now. you ever? No. Just, okay. Just now by seeing the trade. No. Um, I I had been told by one of the detectives that he was on the phone talking to somebody okay. like while he was walking around the store. That was the first time that I was aware he even had a phone. After the fact. This was well after. Okay. This was probably the next day. Okay. So yeah. you, this is the first time you've seen that he was actually on the phone. Yeah. Or what appeared to be him on the phone. Yes. Okay. Um, Dave, I think we're about ready to, to uh, get you out of here. A couple, three quick questions. Have you made any other statements, official statements, to anybody else other than the police department regarding this incident? No. Okay. Media contact you? I think no. Okay. Um, since you didn't make any other statements, you've already answered to us at least twice that your verbal statements that you made in the police department are still accurate to what you recalled on that day and are do not differ from what you told us today. No. Other than sure. other than maybe some little details that, that that swung your memory a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know that, that it really helps what his right hand was doing. You know, I mean I re I recall um, I recall his right hand seeming like he was messing with the rifle of some kind. Okay. Of course, we have reports that he was possibly loading the rifle. Correct. Um, you know, it, it appears as though he had a phone in, in his right hand based on the video. But I can tell you when I rounded the corner, it looked like he was messing with the rifle. It looked like he was doing something with his right hand. But I couldn't, I couldn't see it as well as I could his left hand. Understood. That would be the only thing I could think of. Okay, understood. And is everything you told us today, to the best of your recollection, of the absolute truth of what occurred? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to go back to this video, just because I, I don't think we covered it. This gentleman you see on the left-hand side. Is this guy? The gentleman? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He, he was there, I think, seconds after yeah. the shots were fired. Do yeah. you, by chance, know who that gentleman is? I have no idea. Okay. I, I know is he an employee? We don't know that. I mean, we just got this video of yesterday, so we didn't know. I mean, who it almost guy. looks like he's, he's watching what you're doing. Yeah. I just I didn't know you. You said you were familiar with the Walmart. You're obviously familiar with the area. I didn't know if by chance you knew that that individual. I don't know him. Okay. I know. I don't know. Okay. And we're just the, the reason Brent's asking is we've got a lot of witnesses. You know how this goes being a police officer. Yeah. Sometimes you have a, it's still not responding. It won't, it won't yeah. work like that. I just wondered if you could yeah, be as sure. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I can, I bet I can shut it again. again. I'm sure um, Walmart could tell you if it's an employee they recognize or something, but yeah. I can't think of why, why else he would be headed to where <laughs> we are, you know? Yeah. Unless he's just nosy. I don't know. 
And like you said earlier, um, the store's open, and when you get in, you encounter a greeter and other customers who don't appear to have any idea what's going on. No. Now, while Dave's looking for that video, let me ask you this question. Is there anything we forgot to ask you or you want to mention that you think is important about um, this scenario? can't think of anything else that we haven't covered. I mean, we've... Don't wreck your brain, huh? It's just, yeah. it's just a question. Just yeah, the case. Right. I mean, in that case, you don't think there's anything. Um, since we're there, I'll let you watch your guys' response again because about as close as I'm going to get it. So uh, we're about 40 seconds now from that. But they just pretty much get out of the way room. You guys are coming up. And while you're watching it, just sort of keep in mind the, the amount of time that transpires from the time you arrive and then engage and the shots fired. He walked into like what in the world is that? Yeah. Hat backwards. Is there like a Walmart color on in the beige and yeah, shorts and stuff? Yeah. You know the the Walmart. I think it's a little bit brighter blue than what he's got on. Good eye. And I don't know any of them that wear their hat backwards. Let's let's not go into any more detail on that. Though. I don't know. Really yes. Just a just question about witnesses. Yeah. Anything else, Brent? Good. Sir. No, thank you. Okay. It is uh, it's about twelve nineteen, and we're gonna wrap this interview and hope that we wrap that in enough time for you. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. okay.